put these three together. Pasta is paste of wheat, flour and water associated with Italy. Noodles is just pasta from Asia, usually made with wheat but also rice. And rice, well, that's simply the seed of a plant. Nutritionally, these starchy staples are classified as cereals. So just like the breakfast of champions, a rice pasta or noodle dinner is a great source of energy-rich, complex carbohydrates. And we love them. Every year we put away enough rice and pasta to fill 23 Olympic pools. And we slurp up enough noodles to wrap around the equator more than 30 times. That's some serious carbo-loading. You'd think we're all going to run a marathon. But we're not, are we? So are all those carbs we're eating at night just making us fat? It's over to our crack team of dietitians. Carbs don't make people fat. Overeating makes people fat. Your body needs carbohydrate to run its essential organs like brain and liver. And it doesn't matter what time of the day you have them, your body can process them any time. In fact, the Ministry of Health recommends we load a quarter of our dinner plates with carbs. So, what's in them? They contain almost no fat, which is good, but only contain small amounts of protein. Is that bad? No, there's already a quarter of your plate for protein anyway, and half for vitamin and mineral rich vegetables. In sensible portions, plain rice, pasta and noodles are an important part of a balanced meal. The problems start when we turn these traditional staples into highly processed convenience foods. Often we find carbohydrates have got added oils, added fats and added salt. And food doesn't get more processed than this, instant noodles. Have you ever noticed all the oil that floats on the instant noodles when you make them? And check out the nutrition panels. Most instant noodles have close to 20% fat. What on earth is going on? We asked AUT food scientist Owen Young to explain how manufacturers do it. You make instant noodles by, first of all, taking noodles and boiling them up. And I've done some here. And here they are here. I've boiled these ones up. And they took 10 minutes to do. Now, that's no way that's instant. So we've got wet noodles here, what are we going to do with them? How are we going to make them instant? We can't put wet noodles in a pack, they're going to rot. So we're going to dry the water off. How do we do that? We use cooking oil. So then go our noodles like this, our wet noodles. And you can hear them already, they're starting to, to, to fry up. And what's happening here is water has been explosively driven from the wet noodles. And as it leaves, these little wee holes behind that later on is going to be the holes that the water will come in when you add your hot water for your lunch. It's starting to harden up nicely in there. Okay, bring them out and voila, you have instant noodles. Deep frying noodles turns a healthy carb into a convenience food that has 10 times more fat than plain noodles. And to make matters worse, it's bad fat. Almost all instant noodles are deep fried in palm oil, and that includes the ones that hide behind the vague wording vegetable oil. Palm oil production is widely seen as a looming environmental disaster, but with as much saturated fat as beef tallow, is it also a threat to our health? Too much saturated fat in the diet raises blood cholesterol, and blood cholesterol is a risk factor for coronary heart disease. According to the industry, palm oil is a special case, a saturated fat that isn't bad for you. So are they telling the truth? Palm oil raises LDL cholesterol, but it doesn't quite raise it as much as the kind of saturated fat you find in dairy products. Nevertheless, it raises it. So it's a bad saturated fat. Some manufacturers now offer instant noodles that are baked rather than fried and are not high in fat. But there is another danger lurking in the flavour sachet of most instant noodles. Salt is a problem because it's the source of 90% of the sodium in our diet. The biggest risk with salt intake or sodium intake is related to blood pressure. Now having a high blood pressure increases your risk of heart attack and stroke. Worldwide, high blood pressure kills more people than smoking. And if you need more incentive to cut back on salt, it's also implicated in stomach cancer, kidney failure and osteoporosis. If we reduce our intake down to the recommended level, we could reduce our incidence of heart attacks and strokes by up to about 
The problem is we're unaware of how much we're consuming because 75% of the sodium we eat is hidden in processed food like instant noodles. One serving of instant noodles can contain a huge amount of sodium and more even than the recommended maximum daily intake for an adult. To stay healthy, the National Heart Foundation recommends we limit our sodium from processed foods to 1700 milligrams a day. The bad news is that any of these popular noodles contain that much in just one serving. The problem is that some people eat a lot of instant noodles and no one more so than students. The saying goes, they're cheaper than food. But some doctors say they're putting their health and their exam results at risk. Time for a little experiment. Meet our guinea pigs, Mark, Michael and Brooke. Three AUT students sharing one cramped flat to cut back on expenses. We're going to help them cut their food bill by feeding them fatty, salty instant noodles twice a day. And they're actually happy about it. It's good, easy. I love noodles. It's not too bad. We've got a variety, so it's quite nice. It fits in. It's, it's easy. It's quick. We're testing their blood cholesterol levels to see the effect of palm oil and we're collecting 24 hours worth of urine to measure their sodium levels. For safety's sake, we're only running our experiment for two weeks when we'll test them again to see if their vitals have changed. Salty food is bad for adults, but it's even worse for children. Unfortunately, these products are often marketed as a convenient snack food for children, so that's a real concern. A three-year-old should get no more than 1,000 milligrams of sodium a day, 1,400 for an eight-year-old. Many flavours popular with kids have twice as much sodium in one packet as a toddler should eat in an entire day. To make instant noodles more nutritious, you can throw away the flavour sachet, you can drain out the fluid after it's actually cooked, you can also add in things like a tin of tuna, frozen mixed vegetables, or even crack an egg through it to make it a nice creamy noodle taste. After the break, why do some noodles contain suspected cancer agents? And is illegal GM rice from China putting our health at risk? So if you add a gene to produce an insecticide, then you get a dose of that insecticide too. The salt and fat content in instant noodles can be bad for our health, but are there even more sinister things lurking among the E-number additives in this ultra-processed snack? Many people claim to be sensitive to MSG, saying that it gives them terrible headaches. It's known as Chinese restaurant syndrome. Chinese restaurant syndrome is a myth. Look, MSG is in a huge number of naturally occurring foods. Let me give you some examples. Roquefort cheese, parmesan cheese, soy sauce, fresh tomato juice, grape juice, peas, mushrooms, oysters, corn, potatoes, human milk. Another class with an unsavoury reputation is antioxidants. These are not the healthy antioxidants that we associate with fruit and veg, but artificial preservatives. Look, these instant noodles contain quite a lot of fat, and to stop that fat going rancid, you've got to have antioxidants in there. So they can last six months on the shelf. So these ones here, for example, have got uh, suspects like BHA, BHT. The National Institutes of Health says that BHA is also a suspected cancer agent. It can certainly cause cancer in animals, but at much higher doses than a fountain food. They are not harmful at the levels they're used at. We've also heard rumours about Chinese noodles being contaminated with illegal chemicals. So we sent 10 packets of Chinese noodles to a specialist lab and tested for over 200 different chemicals. And we're happy to report they all came up with a clean bill of health. The same can't be said for our students just one week into their noodle eating frenzy. Yesterday I felt like I was going to die. I was pretty much just <laughs> sitting on the couch and yeah, just waiting for my heart to stop. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, like I felt no. so bad. And some of them are really way more salty, like the beef ones. Beef salty ass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely, that was the worst, I reckon. It was I bad. slept for 14 hours yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nap. Just no more energy. It's really bad. Yeah. We'll leave our students to stew for another week. In the meantime, I want to find out about another Asian staple that's become a Kiwi favourite. You might 
think that most of our rice comes from places like India and China, but in actual fact, around half of it comes from right here, Australia. What makes Australia so good for rice? Well, it's disease free, because we're so far from any other rice grown in the, in the world. What about pesticides? I mean, standing here, I can see there's tons of insects in here, and they're really yeah, big. Yeah. How do you control the, the bad ones? The insects that we have in here now do no damage to the rice. We've got dragonflies, we'll have little lady beetles, all that sort of thing. Rice is sprayed early on against an insect called bloodworm. How do we know as, as consumers that it's not going to be on the rice that we eat? Well, this crop we're standing in here had one pesticide and one herbicide applied to it. That's 100 days ago from now. So that's why it's quite safe. You can take your gumboots off and walk in here with bare feet. Whoa! Rice here is harvested just once a year, but we expect to be able to eat it all year round. So I'm off to find out what happens between the farm and our tables. At the Sunrise Processing Plant in Leeton, New South Wales, the annual harvest is stored for up to a year without the assistance of chemicals. Rice is a terrific grain. The actual grain is actually protected by a husk, which allows us to store rice in controlled conditions. When an order comes in, the rice is passed through a series of rollers and shakers that mechanically remove the husk and separate the rice granules. What comes out is brown rice ready to eat. Brown rice is a much more nutritious food than white. It has B vitamins not found in white rice, twice as much fibre and more minerals like potassium, which actually helps to offset the bad effects of sodium. On the downside, brown rice can easily go rancid and should be stored in the freezer, which is why white rice is more popular. We've all heard of this term whitening. Yes. Is that adding a chemical like a bleach to the rice? This is a, a, a fallacy, I guess. Brown rice has a very thin layer of bran on it. Uh, once that bran is removed, it becomes white rice. And the way it's removed is just rubbing rice particles against each other in a machine. And that's all there is to it. Refining rice is a purely mechanical process. From here, it's bagged and ready for the supermarket. Most supermarkets carry eight or nine varieties, something that would have been unthinkable a generation ago. Rice was more in there. It was dessert, wasn't it? That was quite a popular pudding, rice pudding done in the oven. Just ordinary rice. We didn't have a choice. You went to the shop and asked for a pound of rice. That's what you got. There are actually over 40,000 varieties of rice in the world. All are either the harder long grain kind or the stickier short to medium grain rice. We've eaten these traditional varieties for at least 4,000 years, so we know they're safe. But what about new varieties of rice, engineered in the lab? New Zealand has already approved one kind of genetically engineered rice. Called Alal Rice 62, it was developed by the multinational giant Bayer to be resistant to one of its weed killers. But in 2008, the Food Safety Authority found rice noodles that were contaminated with another kind of GE rice. BT-63 is an experimental Chinese strain engineered to be resistant to insect attack. One of the most important insecticides is a thing called BT toxin, and you can stick a gene in the rice so that the rice produces its own BT toxin, which you wouldn't normally do, and that kills insects. BT-63 is not approved in New Zealand. At the time, it wasn't even approved for use in China. The seed was sold illegally before adequate safety tests could be done. So if you add a gene to produce an insecticide, then the plant that you eat contains that insecticide. Therefore, you get a dose of that insecticide too. Britain's Food Safety Authority said BT-63 should be considered unsafe for human consumption. Our own authority was more measured. So what is the risk? As far as we know, but that's a big question, as far as we know, it has no effect whatsoever on people. So therefore, eating that BT toxin shouldn't, and we don't think it does, have any effect on the consumer. BT toxin won't kill us, but that's not to say it's safe for everyone. And there's been a little concern around the world that people might become allergic to rice that's got BT toxin in it. Now, we don't really know this yet because it hasn't been used quite enough around the world, so we have to be careful. 
Which is exactly why new GM crops need to go through lengthy safety trials. China has now approved BT63 rice, but it's the only country in the world to do so. However, the GM genie cannot be put back in the bottle. This year, European authorities have detected BT63 contaminated rice crackers, rice noodles and dumplings. We don't know if it's still a problem here because our food safety authority hasn't done any testing since 2008. They say the onus is on importers to make sure their products are not GM. After the break, the shocking results of a student diet. You just feel like your heart's like pumping crap. <laughs> <laughs> is pasta better for us? And is it time to put warning lights on processed food? So far in my investigation of the carb aisle, rice is looking pretty good. What about pasta? Nutritionally, there's not much difference, but just like brown rice, when it comes to pasta, whole meal is better. Whole grain pastas are generally a better choice because they've got two and a half times more fibre than standard white pasta. And speaking of healthy alternatives, fact or fiction, couscous is a healthier option than pasta. Couscous is a pasta, it's just a pasta in a different form. It's a lot easier and quicker to cook, but in terms of nutritional content, no different. So that one's fiction. Couscous is made by rubbing flour and water together, and they are the ingredients of pasta. And what about instant pasta meals? Are they healthy? When you're looking for a convenience pasta meal, it won't be the pasta that's the problem. It'll be the added oils and it'll be the added salt. Cooking from scratch may take a little longer, but it makes it much easier to control what we eat. Speaking of which, it's time for me to go and catch up with our students. Our students have been chowing down on two packets of noodles each for two weeks. It's time to see if they are noodled out. Right guys, it's time to reveal how much noodles you've had over the past two weeks. And in here represents how much each of you have had for a fortnight. Oh, that's quite disgusting. This, look, this, this is how much. This is how much noodles you guys have been having. Here we go. It's very, very heavy. Oh my, oh my oh god. My god. Oh <laughs> so what do you think? That's that's Holy. disgusting. So guys, how have you found the past two weeks? Just yeah. no energy, you feel like crap, and you can just feel like your heart's like pumping crap. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of noodles, but here's the really bad news. These noodles are giving you this much salt over a fortnight. Uh, each, yeah. each. each of you. Uh, it's disgusting. Yeah, I'm surprised we're not dead. Well, I feel sick. Well, well, the good go news is that we saw little gosh. change to their cholesterol levels. Yeah. But remember, we only ran our experiment for two weeks. The bad news is that their urine contained very high levels of sodium. Michael's more than doubled from a healthy 97 to 212. And Mark's shot above the recommended maximum level of 250. So are any of you noodle converts? Are you going to keep going with this? No. no. Not going to keep going with this? No. no. Ministry of Health guidelines class deep fried foods, like most instant noodles, as an occasional food, not a healthy everyday option. We put our concerns to the World Instant Noodles Association. They say that instant noodles contain less saturated fat than meat or dairy and that sodium content is exaggerated because people don't usually eat all the soup which contains most of the sodium. Wouldn't it be great if there was an easy way to tell which processed foods were bad for our health? We have nutrition panels, but research shows they're not helping us make better decisions at the supermarket. They're either on the back of a food product or on the side, so they're not immediately apparent when consumers are wandering down a supermarket aisle, and they're quite technical, so the information itself is not actually easy for people to understand and use. Some companies now put percent daily intake tabs on the front of their products, but is it a case of information overload? I think percent daily intake information is helpful to people who have a degree in human nutrition and an ability to use numbers in a, a complex and distracting environment. A recent government review recommended a much simpler system that anyone can understand at a glance. Traffic lights for salt, sugar, total and saturated fat right on the front of the packet. 
We've labelled one set of noodles with daily intake tabs and another set of noodles with the traffic light system. So which system will help our shoppers find the healthiest option? First up, the percentage daily intake tabs. Have a look at the fat content. So that's got less fat. What are you reckon, girls? All I was looking at the sodium. Yeah, Sodium's probably, high, isn't it? Yes, yeah. on those yeah. two. People are finding this hard. How about the traffic lights? Which do you think is the healthiest option here? That one. <laughs> How old are you? Nine. Three greens. Is it a trick question? Oh, we'll have to get the green light one. I'll show you using that, yeah. It's quite a lot easier to see. I think that one's the healthiest. All the shoppers we asked liked the traffic light system and even a nine-year-old can use it to choose the better noodle. Perhaps unsurprisingly, many food companies are much less keen on the system. After all, who's going to buy noodles with three red lights on the front? Well, I think one of the big advantages of traffic light labels is that they'll also encourage manufacturers to reformulate their products so that they don't feature red traffic lights but instead have, have green or perhaps the occasional amber light. So what have I learned about the carb aisle? Well, for one thing, I don't have to avoid it. Some instant meals here do contain a lot of additives. But the real problem is that many highly processed foods are full of bad fat and way too much sodium. Fried, salty noodles are definitely off the menu for my kids. I'll be sticking with simple ingredients for dinner and saving the instant meals for the occasional emergency.